Hey, this is Anne bringing you a Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. So in this video I'll be going over how you can select a single map and choose multiple game modes for it. So I'll demonstrate that now. So in this one I've created a map which just acts as a, a main menu so to speak and I've hit play. It'll load up two options. So first option play team deathmatch, second option play capture the flag. So if I choose play team deathmatch it will load up the third person map and if you, I just shift in F1 and go to the world outliner you can see here I've got a, a team deathmatch uh, game mode there so if I go back into the main menu again and hit play capture the flag shift in F1 and you can see here I've got capture the flag game mode in the world outliner and as I say this is the third person example map as well so it's just changing the game mode it's not having to duplicate multiple maps and choose a game mode for that um, specific map so without further ado I'll go into how you can do that now so the first thing I'm going to do is create the assets that I need and I'm using the third person example uh, project just for this tutorial so under the content folder, right click, new folder, and I'm just going to call that GM Select. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to Blueprints, and I'm going to create a Blueprint class. And if I select all classes, I want to create a game instance. BP select game mode instance and that's ready. Next thing I want to create is a level which is going to act as the main menu so I'm just going to call that main menu map and within this main menu map I want a pawn that can uh, basically trigger the select menu. It's just basically a default pawn, no movements just for the main menu itself. So I'm going to select another blueprint class and I'm going to choose Pawn and I'm going to call this PP Main Menu Pawn. Next thing I want to create is a user interface. So again, right click, user interface, widget blueprints, and that's going to be called WBP Game Mode Select. first bit of blueprint we're going to look at is going to be within the BP select game mode instance but before we do that we need to set that as the current instance that we're going to be using for this project so to do this uh, at the top go to edit project settings and then you need to go into maps and modes and then right at the bottom here you'll see game instance class which is currently the default one and we're going to change this to the one that we created so BP select game mode instance Select that, control shift and S to save, and then we'll open up the, the instance itself so we can start editing it. Dock it at the top, and then that's that we're ready to add some code into it. So the first bit of code is we want an event. So if you just type in custom, add custom event, and this is going to be called play level. Just quickly change that, make sure it's on save, uh, save on compile, on success arm, to save how to keep saving. Next node we need is open level. And we want to open it by name. And as you can see here, you've got the level name here. So what we'll do is we'll get the reference for that, which is under maps, and we know this third person example map, so and the level name, third, third person example map. And bear in mind it's case sensitive so that you'll need to take that into account. Next thing we need to do is we just need to uh, check absolute. And we need to basically make this custom event take in a string. So underneath the uh, inputs, if you just hit new parameter, choose string 
and we're going to call that map mount. Hit compile, plug that into there, and that's the game instance uh, custom event ready to be called. So we're using, in this case, we're using an event in the game instance to change the map, and that's pretty much the rule is there is for the section. For the next section, we're going to start looking at the main menu. So we'll quickly close the game instance because we don't need that now. We might as well close the project settings for now as well. And going back into the uh, GM step folder we created, I'm going to open up the main menu map. So for this, it just needs a uh, menu pawn that will basically open the game mode select menu. So to do that, I'm going to go into the pawn first. I'm going to go into the event graph and we don't need the tick, we don't need the begin overlap. What we're going to do is we're just going to be, um, create the widget from this. So first thing we do is we drag off and we type in create widget. We're going to choose our widget blueprint game mode select and we're going to add that to the viewport. Also, from this, we're going to get the player controller. I'm going to set the input mode to UI only. And while we're at it, we'll just drag in that so it focuses that widget. Drag off the player controller, and we're looking for set show mouse cursor. We want to set that to true. So, the event begins play. It'll create the widget for the main menu and it'll set the game modes to UI only and it'll, it'll show the mouse cursor and focus in on the widget created. Now that's done, it's time to go into the widget blueprint here. So, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to find a horizontal box drag that in and then for the anchor position I'm going to shift click and control click to get it in the center. Increase the size so it's a bit bigger so let's make it 800 by 200 and that's fine. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a button and on the button I'm going to drop on some text as well. So for this one I'm just going to call this TDM button for team deathmatch and then on the text I'm going to put play team deathmatch I'm just going to quickly change the font colour to black as well so it contrasts both with the, the grey so next thing I want a second button and I want it on the same horizontal box so I'm going to Highlight TDM button, Control C, select the horizontal box, Control V. And instead of it being called TDM button, I'm going to call this CTF button for capture the flag. And then quickly change the text to play capture the flag. Um, don't like the spacing, so what I might do is select the button, put it on to fill, and set the other one, put it to fill as well, and then just so it's got a little bit of separation, dragging the space in between the two buttons, and give it a, just a bit of 40 uh, pixel size on the X. Now that we've got our two buttons, we need to create events for these when they're clicked. So first thing I'm going to do is just quickly clear the search up here, select the TDM button and on the details panel scroll down to the bottom under events I'm going to choose on clicked that'll take you into the graph but before we do any coding go back into the designer tab here at the top select the CTF button and then under that one as well scroll to the bottom under events also choose on clicked compile save that and now we're ready to begin coding the, the widget to choose a game mode. 
So before we start coding, I did make a minor mistake, which is I created all the widgets and I created the main menu, but I didn't actually create any game modes to actually use for when we enter the third person example map. So we'll remedy that now. So what we need to do is we need to go back in the asset folder, right click, choose blueprints, blueprint class, and under the all classes search, I'm going to search for a game mode and I'm going to use game mode base. I select and I'm going to call this game BP team deathmatch GM for game mode. So I want one for capture the flags, so same process, blueprints, blueprint class, typing game mode, select game mode base, I'm going to call this BP capture the flag GM. So control shift and S. And that's pretty much our two game modes ready to be used as in the example. So now we're going to add the car with the blueprints within the widget blueprint select. So it's going to be based on the let's say the two on clicks event buttons. So we'll do team deathmatch button first. So first things first, let's create a variable. And what we're going to create to use a string variable for this. And we call it game mode selection. Quickly compile. I hold Alt and we're going to shift and drag that in. And we might as well do it for both as well. So select the nodes, Control W. We'll create two copies of it, but for now we'll, we'll do the top one before we do the we'll do the team deathmatch before we do the capture the flag one. So we we'll create a variable. Next thing we need to do is we need to basically get a game instance. So rather than casting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the event construct instead. So from the event construct, first let's get the game instance. We want to cast to our current game instance, so uh, cast to BP select game mode instance, that's the one we've created. And what I want to do is from the as BP select game mode instance, I'm just going to right click on that and I'm going to promote it as a variable. Uh, I'm going to just change the name up as well. Call it BP select game mode instance ref. Hit compile, and then we can basically, as soon as this uh, widget blueprint is constructed, it's just going to store a copy of the instance that we can use later. So, the reason why is we want to call the events that we created inside the BP select game mode instance, which is this open level. So, going back into the widget blueprints, I'm going to control the, this and get a getter and then if I drag out of it type in play level you'll see the, the custom events we've got so again might as well copy and paste that so it's ready to use later so we need to choose the game mode so the first thing we need to get is we need to get a reference for that game mode and we use this by a class reference uh, selection so First one we want is the BP Team Deathmatch uh, GM. We're going to right click on that and we're going to copy the reference. Go back into the widget blueprints. I'm going to control and paste it into that. So, first things first, we need to get a copy. We need to just change this text slightly as well. So it's going to be GM underscore C, denoting class. But we need to do something about the, the start as well. We need to get rid of blueprints. Next thing we need to do is we just need to go question mark um, game equals. And what this does is it basically allows you to basically parse into the option string a game mode. In this case, we're passing in. 
the BP2 deathmatch game mode. And then we're just saying, well, we just we haven't got a particular object to this, but we're asking for the class instead. Continuing on, what we'll do now is we'll connect this together and we'll see if it works. So connect to on click to TDM button to that. And what we're going to do is we're going to literally just connect the string to that. And I say that'll pass through this game mode reference through this custom vent into the option string here. So bear in mind we've only got team deathmatch, but let's give it a go and see what happens and see if we need to fix anything. So I hit play. And at the moment there's no pawn in the scene, so the, the menu won't appear. So quickly what we'll do is we'll just drag that into the scene and we'll just zero, we'll default it at zero. Let's hit play again. Ah, so there we go. So we've got play team deathmatch and play capture the flag. So let's choose play team, team deathmatch. And there you have it. So it's actually loaded the first person example map. And let's have a look and see if it's loaded the, the BP team deathmatch GM. And as you can see here, it has. So that's working, but at the moment, Obviously can't move because it's still stuck on uh, input mode UI only. But we'll remedy that next. So to quickly remedy that, we'll just go into our BP team deathmatch game mode and onto the event graph. We'll just get our player controller. Drag off that. Set input mode mode game only. And then from the player control again, set mouse, oh, set show mouse cursor. And we'll set that to false instead. And we can quickly do that in the capture the flag one, just for this example. So, get the player controller. Set input mode, game only. Set show mouse cursor to false, and then I've got the executable pins. So we'll try that again. We'll hit play. We'll play team deathmatch, and as you can see, we're now able to interact with the character. So lastly, we'll uh, we'll hook up to the capture the flag mode, so that will use the that mode instead of the team deathmatch mode. Before we go back into the widget blueprints. What we need to do is we need to get a class reference to the uh, capture the flag game mode. So again, all we do is right click it, copy reference, go into widget blueprint game mode select, and we're going to paste it in here. At the end, just delete, type in underscore capital C, because we're referencing class. And then right at the start, we want to do question mark game equals. And that's the second uh, modes, game mode that we've created on, based on this one clicks button here. So connect it all up. Hit compile, save. Quickly control shift ns as well, save all the assets hit play and we'll choose play capture the flag shift in F1 so we can get the mouse cursor scroll down in the world outline and as you can see here we've got BP capture the flag a, a GM so that brings us to the end of the video so I hope you find that useful and obviously if you have any questions please put in the comments below um, just for the these, I'll put the actual these string selections inside of the, the the actual description as well. That way, you've got a point of reference. But please bear in mind that if you've stored your game modes anywhere else or in a different folder, you will need to obviously make sure that you right click on where that game mode is and copy the reference from there. So there might be some variation to keep in mind. But hopefully, um, you'll find this useful. Thank you for watching my video. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to my channel.